Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and we have something different today, or at least for me, um, which is a beginner's guide to lever locks and lever lock picking. Now, I don't do a lot of lever lock picking, but the reason I decided to do a video on it at the moment is because there is currently a, a lock doing the rounds, a pass around lock, uh, which is a Chubb uh, lever lock padlock, which I want to pick on video for you at some point soon. So it makes sense to do a little uh, video on uh, lever locks and lever lock picking now uh, because this channel is uh, focused on sort of new pickers and intermediate pickers. Um, let me first go through the parts of one of these, uh, these lever locks. This is an ERA mortise curtained lever lock. ERA is the make. You might have heard of ERA. It's um, a lever lock because the lock has, um, well, ideally, uh, one or more levers, uh, usually uh, two to six. This one has five. It's mortise because it um, is countersunk into a hole um, in a door frame. And it's curtained because if you look here, you can see this is a little, um, well, incomplete circle of metal, a shroud in the keyway. The, so the main uh, parts of uh, this uh, five lever mortise um, curtained lever lock are the bolt. At the moment, this cannot uh, retract. So if this was in a door frame, you can imagine it'd be like that. This um, would stop you opening the door. And it's stopped because you can see here, the levers are blocking its uh, retraction. The levers themselves, there's five of them, you might be able to count the number of springs in the back. So there are five leaf um, levers there. And if I turn it there, you can see them all stacked up. Um, you can also see at the bottom, there is a cam. And there is the cam. And the cam is acted on by a key. The cam uh, engages with the bolt and tries to retract it. If you lift all the levers up so that um, the gates all line up with this part of the bolt, it can retract into um, the gates of all of the levers. So um, when we talk about a gate, we're talking about the gap um, actually in this lever here. If I put a key in, you'll see how it works. So. I'll just angle that a bit for you so you can see some of those uh, levers acting and introduce you to the key. So the key looks like, um, you look at the bitting on the key and you can see this, it looks like it will act on seven different levers. So three that side, one in the middle and three there. In this case, no, it's a five lever lock. The first two parts of this here and here actually act on the cam. If I put that in, you should be able to see that um, now you've only exposed the third uh, part here to the levers, then this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that goes in here. This is, like I said, um, this is a curtained um, lever lock, and um, this piece of metal, the shrouding inside the keyway, is an anti-pick device. Um, it just, I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so what you do is you put the key in, you then turn it, and what you can see is it lifts each one of these, um, the key actually lifts all the levers to a specific height. And you can see there that the gates all line up, okay? And you can see that the, the bolt will just slide um, into those gates and retract. That means you have an open lock, okay? So that's how they work. These levers are sprung. The key lifts them up to different heights depending on the bitting. Um, you can see here that, it, logically, you can see that this low cut one here lifts the levers very little. This high cut lifts it quite a lot. Some other security features to uh, note are, if you look carefully here, you can see that there is um, a gate. That is where you want the bolt to slide into. And then there's this other little bit here, which the bolt retracts up against. Um, as you're as you're pulling now, if I line it up here, can you see that there's another notch 
So if I was um, picking this with a, a lever pick, it may slide into and bind into that groove here, just there. That is called a false gate. It's another um, anti-pick mechanism. That means, of course, that what you end up doing is um, retracting it, and instead of it sliding into this, uh, the real gate, the true gate, it, it might retract into uh, this gate. Um, so that's security measure. You'd also notice that um, the bottom here, if I line them all up, you've actually got a um, uh, another little ledge. That is to stop overlifting. You can imagine that if you put in an overlifter, um, which is a tool designed to push all of the levers as high as they go, then um, what could happen when it's in, um, what could happen is, of course, you could just move all the levers up. Combined with that ledge and this piece of metal here, those levers cannot be overlifted in this lock. As far as I know, any other lever lifters out there, please let me know if that is wrong. Um, but normally, these, um, in fact, I think these these this ledge here is is superfluous. So I don't think that these uh, levers could be lifted past uh, this uh, ledge on the bolt anyway. Okay, so. I think I've explained mostly how this works. Like I said, we put the key in, the cam is activated by uh, the first two um, parts of the key. Move it up, it lifts all of the levers to um, the true gate because it's the correct key. You, then the cam acts on the bolt to move it into the gate and then it's, it's locked, okay? And you can also see if you remove the key at this point, you can't then retract the bolt um, without the key going back in and unlocking it and lifting all those levers over again. So how do you pick this? Well, remember I said that this is a curtained lever lock. That means at the bottom you have a curtain and that is designed. So when you put in a, a pick like this, you can't actually rotate that um, around in the lock. If you had an open uh, keyway, a non-curtain lever, you can imagine you could turn this all the way around and actually act on the levers. How do we get around it? Well, um, I've actually got a cut down key. Okay, so what you can do is take one key and cut it down. That is a uh, tried and tested technique for these. Now, um, this will probably work on a number of different uh, locks. And there are tools out there that um, you can buy which uh, actually fit a, a multiple lock types, not just this um, five lever era. If I put this in, you can actually see that it, it doesn't act on the, the levers, but it does uh, allow me to get to a position where there's a gap in the curtain where I can act on each of those levers in turn. There we go. So this is a, essentially a tension tool. The lever pick itself here, which I made, is actually made from a coat hanger. Coat hanger a bit, uh, and a hammer and a dremel. And I've got a, a, a nice end here, uh, which I can turn that lever with. And this is thin enough to act on one lever at a time. Okay, so let's have a go. Okay, so we have the, um, the lock in position. It's uh, in its uh, locked position, if you will. And we have our tension tool. Just out of interest, I don't know if I explained it fully here, but uh, this little nib um, acts on the cam only. We slide both of them in together, and that will fit nicely in this space here where the curtain is. And what we do is just like in well, a bit like in, in standard pin tumbler picking, we apply tension to uh, the lock. So some turning force, I'm, I'm turning this clockwise, this tensioner. And we go in and we try to find a lever that's binding. These levers will bind in an order. Sometimes you can force the binding order by adding uh, more tension, just like in a, in a pin tumbler. The idea is just to add enough force so that um, one or maybe two, uh, if you're adding a little bit more tension, of these levers bind. That will mean that when they fall into a gate, false or otherwise, you should hear a bit of a click. Um, a true gate 
tends to have more room than a false gate. So um, experienced lever lock pickers should be able to tell the difference. Um, I'm not sure I'm ready yet for that. So uh, tension on, uh, try to pick one lever at a time. And I heard a little click there as it moved into position. Now, the second lever um, is one which is a bit of a zero lift. So it's, it's sort of almost at the gate already. Uh, let's try and find another binder. I'm on lever, well, if we're counting uh, back to front, then this would be lever three. Uh, trying to get onto one lever at a time here. There we go. Lever three, little click. Lever two, little click. Lever one, little click. Um, just nudge any of the levers. Ah, and we got an open. So there we go. So it's important at this point when you still got some movement. When when you you can feel that the bolt has thrown. You heard as um, the bolt acts up on those levers and hits. Uh, hits the actual gate, it goes click. Very reminiscent of pin tumbler picking, isn't it? I can then extract um, this lever picking tool gently out of the lock, and that's because you will get it trapped if you don't. Um, especially with these curtained locks, then you can use the tensioner just to retract that bolt fully, okay? You can, until it's um, straight in the gate, use it to turn turn it backwards. Once it's in that gate, you will need to pick it um, back out of that position um, by using the um, this lever and and doing the same thing, but backwards essentially, uh, going in and um, and lifting these levers up to um, up to up to their gate. Um, so that what can happen, I won't demonstrate that here, a quicker way, of course, is to um, just get the key and turn it all back. But yeah, like I said, you can do the picking but in reverse. So there we go. Okay, guys, um, I hope you found that interesting. I clearly need a lot more practice with um, uh, lever locks. Knowing the theory is one thing, being able to explain it is one thing, being able to actually um, put a cover on this and pick it blind is completely different. And I have great respect and admiration for any of you leave lock pickers out there. Um, if you like this kind of picking, please add some comments below and I'll see you next time where I will probably be looking at um, that chub padlock and picking that one. Okay, see you next time.